28th story from the Gateless Gate from the book Zen Flesh, Zen Bones written by Paul Treps. Blow out the candle. What have you attained? Asked Yuten. From now on, said Tokusan, I will not doubt the teacher's words. Yes, because I know if I eat, I have to digest. Yes. And to eat, I have to be hungry. I have to be thirsty. To eat, to be hungry, I work. Like the saying goes, when Britishers came to India, they asked the people, did you have your food in the morning? He said, food? No, sir, morning we will only work. No work, no food. After working, our wife comes around 11 o'clock. When the sun rises, we go to work in the field. Around 11 o'clock, she comes to the previous days. Genji or something. That time we eat the food. So what bloody nonsense it is. Morning, you don't eat. You say it is fasting, now break the fast. And the Indians broke the fast, it seems, and had the breakfast. From then onwards, all the diseases came, all the hospitals opened up. <laughs> the hospitals have become the truth. Diseases have become the God. The next day, Ryutan told the monks at this lecture, I see one monk among you, his teeth are like the sow tree. His mouth is like the blood bowl. If you hit him hard with a big stick, he will not even so much as look back at you. Someday you will mount the highest peak and carry my teachings there. On that day in front of the lecture hall, Tokusan burned to ashes his comment commentaries on the sutras. Books. You keep on trying to study and study and then you try to tell the others without experience. It's better to burn it out like how you eat your food. And after you, after you have served the food, do you keep the food, balanced food there, the place over there? You just clean it up and you have to go to the restroom to make sure it is also moved out to the land for the new trees to blow up. But if it is not done, it becomes constipation. Hence, a lot of constipated mind has created a lot of industries, fast food centers. On that day, in front of the lecture hall, Tokus and burned to ashes his commentaries on the sutras. He said, how abstruse! The teachings are, in comparison with this enlightenment, they are like a single hair to the great sky. <laughs> How profound the complicated knowledge of the world compared to this enlightenment? It is like one drop of water to the great ocean. Then he left that monastery. Yes, it is like one drop of water to the great ocean. Before the marriage, yes. So many programs are conducted by the Hindus family in India. The boy's family comes, the girl's family goes, that's it. Again, the boy's family comes, the girl's go. They exchange and exchange, introduce, introduce. Much, much before the marriage, the girl and the boy know so much about the Sanskrit or the other side and this side. Yes. And even after the marriage, the parents are around him. The girl's parents, the boy's parents are around him. For another five years, he has not here the smallest thing. A psychologist, psychiatrist come. We have a saying over here, when the, when the, the present generation, when, when they get married, they move into a, a nucleus family, husband and wife, when the husband falls sick and he says, Hutch, he's got a cold. The wife brings up to the Manipal hospital and takes him to the Manipal hospital and the doctors check so many things, 10 to 24, 25 uh, lab tests and then a two and a half like check. But if it is a joint family, when the husband says Hachi or he's got a cold or a fever, the wife rushes up to the grandmother and the grandmother says, Oh, she put some ginger, ginger punji, make a paste, put it in his mouth, hit him on his bum and he'll run to the hospital <laughs> to end up like safe. No lab test. How profound the complicated knowledge of the world compared to the enlightenment. It is like a drop of water to the great ocean. It's a drop of water for all the books, all the degrees, all the PhDs that you got. It's just a drop of water in the great ocean of your beautiful family. The husband and wife, and they always hug morning and evening together. That is a great ocean. When they don't hug, then it's a drop of water. And it becomes whiter and whiter. Then he left that monastery. You have to leave it. You don't have to be there. 